Hi, I'm Steven Seagal. I'm an American. And to me, nothing means America more than America and Americans. So I decided to take a trip into the small towns of America. That might look like Saturday Night Live doing a parody of action star Steven Seagal, but it's actually from the sketch comedy series Mad TV. Inspired by Mad Magazine, the show was created by the Fox Network to compete with NBC's long-running Late Night Week in Juggernaut. But while SNL continues on to this very day, Mad TV didn't make it out of the aughts. What went wrong? Well, we've got a snappy answer to that stupid question. Where your boyfriend at? Is he getting you refreshments? Is he tall? Is he getting you Mike and Ike's? Or you like Mike and Ike's? But before we take a mad look behind the scenes of Mad TV, why not take a moment to subscribe to the Nerdstalgic channel? Published by EC Comics, the satirical comic book tales calculated to drive you mad first hit newsstands in 1952. The publication would quickly shorten its name to Mad, and in 1955, it would change formats and become a magazine. Excuse me, is this Mad Magazine? No, it's Mademoiselle. We're buying our sign on the installment plan. <laughs> Over the decades, that magazine would become a unique and strangely influential part of pop culture. An odd mix of juvenile humor rag, socio-political lampoon, and TV, movie, and popular music parodies. Its mascot, Alfred E. Newman, and his catchphrase, What? Me Worry? became iconic. And at its peak, Mad sold over 2 million copies per issue, spawning a wave of imitators. By the 1990s, Mad Magazine had become an American institution, but it had never made the jump to TV because publisher William Gaines personally disliked the medium. After Gaines' death in 1992, however, EC decided to sell the rights to a mad show to a production company owned by television producer David Salzman and record producer Quincy Jones. Meanwhile, the Fox network was looking to take on Saturday Night Live. On the precipice of entering its 21st year, the series had long since grown stale. Its 1994 season was so bad, Fox had good reason to believe it could maybe steal NBC's thunder in the sketch comedy arena. I come here to offer you a truce. I'm afraid I must reject your offer of fruit juice. Fox had recently experienced success along those lines with the hit series In Living Color. 1995's House of Buggin was developed to take its place, but was cancelled just after six episodes. To fill the gap in the schedule, Fox then turned to Mad TV. The new show would replace the entire cast of its predecessor, except future Office Space star David Herman. Alongside Herman, its original lineup featured Brian Callen, Orlando Jones, Phil Lamar, Artie Lang, Mary Shear, Nicole Sullivan, and Deborah Wilson. Salzman would act as showrunner alongside former In Living Color writers Adam Small and Fax Barr, and the show would employ a dozen writers. Among those originals was future comic megastar Patton Oswalt and his then-creative partner, comedian Blaine Kapach. Just like Mad Magazine, the series would usually take aim at pop culture, and in the early years, the show made a point of taking shots at SNL directly, something the writers would say the network demanded. It also featured occasional appearances by an animated version of Mad Mascot, Alfred E. Newman, and animated segments based on the magazine's arguably most famous recurring feature, Spy vs. Spy. Like in SNL, celebrity impressions and wacky characters were a staple. Mad TV also had musical guests like SNL, except for in its second season, it had no featured celebrity hosts. Instead, it had celebrity guests whose roles were generally much more limited than its counterparts hosts. The celebrity guests did include a lot of famous faces, but nothing even close to SNL's seemingly endless roster of A-list hosts. Mad TV was also less prone to doing political satire than SNL, and its humor was generally broader. This was partially conceptual, but it was also a byproduct of an aggressive standards and practices censor at Fox. And the fact that unlike SNL, Mad TV wasn't live. Taped three weeks in advance, the show couldn't react to world of events in real time like its NBC counterpart, and so it generally tried to avoid being too topical. The overall effect was usually more like Saturday Night Live for high schoolers. Look what I can do! That quality would make Mad TV extremely popular with the teenage demographic, and by 2001, more teens would be watching Mad TV than SNL. But the same factor meant that the show didn't really turn out to be competition for SNL any more than the 1994 children's sketch comedy series All That did. Now, regardless of quality, Mad TV had a couple of other problems to contend with. For one, unlike SNL, which is owned by NBC, Mad TV wasn't owned by Fox. That meant Fox didn't have as much invested in its success. As a result, after the first season, the network barely promoted the show at all. They also cut the show's budget a number of times, which certainly didn't make competing with the comparatively extravagant SNL any easier. But the biggest problem Mad TV faced was that in 1995, Saturday Night Live finally started getting good again. When Mad TV began development, SNL was seemingly on its last legs. In Barr's words, it was described as a wounded zebra and we were the young lion. It did not, however, go down that way. 
Instead, SNL would rebound that very year, a development bar would later credit to the creation of Mad TV, saying, Part of it was because our competition. We got word that Lorne Michaels had seen our pilot, and I think he heard footsteps. They got Will Ferrell that year and raided the Groundlings. A weekend Saturday Night Live might have been vulnerable to competition, but reinvigorated, the show was simply too iconic to challenge. Mad TV beat it in the ratings for a short time, but SNL quickly regained its footing and never looked back. Despite everything, Mad TV would go on to have a 14 season run. And at the time of cancellation in 2009, it was Fox's fourth longest running series. You would think with that kind of longevity, Mad TV, like SNL, would have launched the careers of a generation of comic stars. But while a handful of cast members would go on to have noteworthy careers, that never really happened. There's no single reason why this is the case, it's partially a function of the series being perceived as a kid's show, and partially because SNL's higher profile and bigger budget attracted more rising comic stars in the first place. No doubt, the fact that Mad TV's cast didn't get to share the stage with SNL's top-tier celebrity hosts and acquire some fame by association also played a part. The fact that Mad TV wasn't cranking out megastars made it less noteworthy to the general viewership over time. Barr and Small departed at the end of season three, leaving the show without a single Lorne Michaels type guiding voice. Writers and producers could disagree on how much of the show needed to be pop culture parodies. And while some of the cast were bragging about how the series wasn't afraid to be mean, some of the writers were under the impression they weren't out to offend anyone. The result could be a weird mishmash of comic styles. We're just like Ashton Kutcher and Demi Moore. Except he's 33 and I'm 93. <laughs> but even if you just like Mad TV for its style and cast, being a fan wasn't always easy. Season 3 also notably saw the departure of a full quarter of the original cast, and by season 7, all but Wilson would be gone. Then, at the end of season 8, three fan favorite cast members, Alex Borstein, Will Sasso, and Andrew Daly, would all leave. And after that, Mad TV became a revolving door of talent as it struggled to find a new groove. Ratings sank over time, and additional budget cuts in season 11 stopped producers from making more than two new hires. In the name of budget cuts, the later seasons also saw some experimentation with format changes, and eventually most of the animated content would be cut. Over time, the production started to look noticeably cheap, then, in its 14th season, the network moved the show an hour later, from 11 to midnight. Viewers didn't follow, and producers were eventually informed that the series was too expensive for the meager ratings it was attracting. By the time Mad TV was cancelled, its magazine counterpart was also on the ropes selling less than 150,000 copies per issue, in 2018, its publisher would end newsstand distribution completely. Ever since, the magazine, which to date has sold over 411 million copies, has been available only in comic book stores and via subscription. Mad TV was revived by The CW for a brief 15th season in 2016, but it wasn't renewed and the brand hasn't been seen since. For fans of Mad TV, it's maddening to think about what it might have been if SNL didn't bounce back, if the creatives could have found a consistent comedic voice. Or if Fox hadn't been so stingy with the budget, the show died a death of a thousand cuts and given Mad's unique place and culture, that's kind of a shame. Maybe Alfred E. Newman should have been worried after all. So what do you think? Were you a fan of Mad TV? And if so, do you wish someone would bring it back? Let us know down in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely find others you like if you check out the rest of the channel. As always, thank you for subscribing to Nerdstalgic.